Here is a ripple tank simulation. Uh, so what we're imagining here is this is a big tank of water and there's two little white uh, crosses here. These are like little um, tapper, little points, tappers that are just tapping in the water making waves. And so what we see is waves spreading out away from these two little tappers. Uh, and the colors here, the sort of light blue is uh, the top of a wave, a wave crest, and the dark color, the blackish, is the wave trough. Uh, and so if we look over on the right hand side here, we can see there are three main regions here of big waves. Uh, if we sort of imagine this right side here as like our screen, um, we have three regions of big waves, three regions of constructive interference between our two wave sources. And these regions that look uh, sort of calm, that don't have the alternating light and dark, these would be our destructive interference, our, our dark spots, which in this case is just calm water, uh, is what destructive interference would mean. So here is a region of destructive interference. Down here is another region of in destructive interference. Uh, and I can move, change the separation between my point sources, uh, and it takes a little while for this uh, sort of new distribution to show up. But I change the separation between them, and I've changed where the constructive interference and destructive interference happens here. Um, so I can see how the separation between my two point sources affects the uh, what the interference pattern looks like. I can set here a phase difference. So rather than these two tappers tapping in phase, I can have them tapping uh, slightly off uh, so that they aren't synchronized. And I should see that that changes what the brighten, what the constructive and destructive points look like. Uh, just as something that'll be real easy to see. Let's put it at no phase difference. So right now, they are synchronized. And right here in the middle, we have big waves. We have constructive interference. If I slide this all the way over to the other side, now our sources are exactly out of phase. So one taps, and then halfway through the cycle, the other one taps. And if we look now, straight ahead now, is destructive interference rather than constructive. Uh, so that is our phase shift. Uh, like our tuning forks being tapped at different times, affecting where the bright and dark spots are, or constructive and destructive uh, parts. I can change the frequency of our sources. Remember, frequency is related to wavelength. So if I change the wavelength, I change where the constructive and destructive interference shows up. Uh, right now, both of our wave sources have the same frequency. Over here, I can change this to be two sources with two different frequencies. So I do that. Right now, they are still the same frequency, but I can change the frequency here. Uh, so I'm going to slide source 2 here to have a much different frequency from source 1. Uh, and we no longer get a nice interference pattern here. Uh, let me make them a little closer so it's easier to see uh, sort of what happens. So now their frequencies are just a little bit different. And you can sort of see uh, the interference pattern is kind of sliding around here. That if I look at a certain point on the screen, I get constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive as the waves slide by. Uh, and that's happening because our two wave sources are not the same frequency now. Uh, so you can play around with that. Uh, there's actually a ridiculous amount of things you can try here. Uh, you can change, you can make plane waves. Uh, what we have now is just point sources. You can pick any ridiculous number of sources to play around with. Um, or there is just a ton of things here that we can play around with refraction, total internal reflection. These are things that we looked at uh, from the perspective of light rays, but we could look at them from the perspective of waves as well. Uh, so here is a wave traveling towards a boundary, and it doesn't really make it into the second boundary much. It basically turns and travels around the edge. This is our total internal reflection. So there are a ton of things that you can play around with in this simulation. 
Um, I would, for our chapter, stick with the two sources um, and just sort of see what that looks like, move them around, change their spacing, play with the phase difference, and just get a feel for what the bright and dark spots look like. Um, and I will admit the question about the two stars, about what you what the interference pattern would be or whether there would be one if you had two stars with different frequency light, I struggled with that for quite a while. I spent uh, an afternoon thinking about that problem, and it wasn't until I used this simulation that I was able to visualize dynamically what was happening, that I was able to think about the waves passing by, uh, that I was able to understand why the two different frequencies means that we don't get a static interference pattern. Uh, so a great simulation, and I'll put the link in the comments below.